to episode one of DS Squad After Dark. It is your host, Eli. You already know what it is. <laughs> First of all, before I even get into what we're about to talk about, I just want to say thank you to everybody for the, the support. The support has been amazing ever since I started, you know, the DS Squad, you know, platform. It has been amazing, 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 amazing. You know, just seeing, you know, people reaching out, whether it's face to face, whether it's through DMs, whether it's through comments. I'm, I'm, I'm really excited. I'm really excited for this, you know, new step in the DDS squad platform. I'm just, I'm thankful. I really am. Shout out to my family. Shout out to So EDS Squad After Dark, I had this idea of doing a podcast because I've always enjoyed doing podcasts. I love um, The Read. Um, it's a podcast that I listen to frequently. I love the tax stones, tax season. Um, free tax stone, by the way, free tax stone. Um, I love um, Angela Yee's Lip Service. Big, big, big fan of Brilliant Idiots with Charlemagne the God and Andrew Schultz. Um, and the list goes on and on. I'm a big, big, big podcast person. So I always wanted to, you know, after I get my YouTube established, after I get my, you know, Facebook presence established, my Instagram established, I wanted to venture out and do a podcast where I could just no whole bars. I could talk the way I want to talk. And, you know, we could just conversate. You guys can take me on the go, take me and whoever I bring on as well on the go. And we're just going to talk about a lot of things. We're going to talk about things in pop culture. We're going to talk about things, relationships, sex, all of that good jazz after dark. So we're going to talk about it all. Um, This is definitely not a child-friendly, a children-friendly podcast. So, listeners out there, I just want to let you guys know that you guys can tell your kids to get the fuck from around here in three, two, one. I'm going to give you a couple minutes. Okay. So, the kids should be out. So, now we can go into some little grown folks' business. So, we're going to start off the podcast every week with, you know, news topics and things that's going around in the news and, you know, media and entertainment and all that stuff. And I'll get my commentary and I'll talk about all of that good jazz. And then after that, we'll have a segment for, you know, relationship and sex talk. And then I'll always end my um, podcast with a story, whether it be a sex story, a family story, a funny story. Story, a sad story, um, you know, just a little bit like that. So let's get into the pop culture, let's get into the news, and let's get into all of that good jazz. Let me pull up, you know, some things so we can talk about. It has been a really crazy newsworthy, you know, couple of weeks. I wanted to strategically pick a time where the news is kind of buzzing, and, you know, we can talk and discuss some things. Shout out to my fave, Missy, Melissa, Missy, Mr. Meaner, Elliot. I have to tell you guys, Missy Elliot is one of my favorite artists in general. Fuck rapping, fuck all of that other shit. Artist, period. Missy is was so innovative and so ahead of her time. Her and Timbaland in the 90s just made, made art. They made a stamp. They made music that we could listen to generations upon generations. You know, the Aaliyahs and the um, Genuines and the list goes on and on, you know. And Missy um, was inducted, officially inducted into the Songwriters Hall of Fame. Again, shout out to Missy Elliott. 
Um, she was inducted this past Thursday um, into the Songwriters Hall of Fame, making her the first female rapper to ever be inducted. The ceremony took place in New York City, and um, there's a lot of people that was on deck to, you know, support Missy. Queen Latifah was there, the brat was there, and up and coming rapper Lizzo. And you know, she even received a special message for our first lady, my first lady, my forever first lady. I don't give a damn who's in charge of the country right now. President Barack Obama and first lady Michelle Obama, they will forever. As long as this nigga is in charge, they will forever be my forever president and first lady. And um, it was, that's just so dope that, you know, she got accolades from everybody. She deserves it. One thing I have to say about Missy is she does not get the praise and the accolations that she deserves. There's just been so many songs, so many music videos, so many albums, so many artists that she has developed, that she wrote for, that she, you know, been instrumental in. And she is definitely pro um, women rappers. She's definitely pro women, period. And I live for that. I really do live for that. I do. So again, shout out to Missy and MTV. The VMAs is coming up soon. They're coming up real soon. If Missy is not the Vanguard, you know, person, the Vanguard award that they give out every year, me and MTV, we gonna have some issues. We gonna have some issues. So MTV, I'm telling you right now, right now, get your lights and give Missy the Vanguard Award. Period. Period. And speaking of period, shout out to one half of the City Girls, Young Miami, just announced that she is a child. She is having a baby girl. Um, <laughs> that whole situation with her, you know, debunking that she was pregnant because, you know, people seen a little bump during the performance that she had recently. Um, it's funny. I love Young Miami. I love the city girls. They're definitely doing their thing. Free JT, free JT, free J motherfucking T. You already know it. Um, I'm so, so, so happy for her, and I wish her the best in this pregnancy. Um, and just because she's pregnant does not mean that she cannot turn the fuck up and it cannot be City Girl Summer. Um, Cardi B, Beyonce, the list goes on and on. Plenty of artists had, you know, pregnancies and they performed and they, you know, promoted their work. So I don't want to hear it. Okay, okay. So let's shift into something a little bit, a little bit more serious. Um, today, Friday, I'm shooting this Friday, you know, June 14th. And today it was announced that um, all five suspects were found guilty in the murder of Lissandro Junior Guzman Files. First of all, that whole situation is just, it was just a sad, 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 sad story for Junior. And I'm so happy and I'm so glad that, you know, his killers were brought to justice. I'm glad all, all of them, every last one of them were charged. Just, it's just sad that, you know, a lot of our African-American brothers and sisters are being gunned down um, and killed. Um, it's just a sad thing, you know, by the police, by, you know, black on black crime. You know? And even though these, uh, Junior was of uh, black descent, you know, he's still a person of color. And, you know, it's, it's just sad. It's just sad. Rest in peace, Junior. The killers were brought to justice, and I know the families are definitely, definitely grieving a 
sigh of relief, even though the pain of losing their loved one will never go away, at least they have the comfort in knowing that the killers that, you know, ended, you know, their family member's life was brought to justice. And yeah, rest in peace to Queen Hey, so shout out, I want to say shout out to the Toronto Raptors. Shout out, shout out to y'all. Y'all made history. I'm not really a sports person. My favorite team, though, in the NBA is the San Antonio Spurs. Um, anybody, you know, that's going to try to grab me for saying that, um, say it to my face. Okay? Say it to my motherfucking face. Okay? But, <laughs> no, for real. Shout out to the Toronto Raptors. Shout out to Kawhi, Kawhi Leonard. I don't know how you say his name or whatever. What happened to the days of people being named John and Jacob and Isaac? <laughs> we gotta have Shawanta and Karante and Geron Geronosaurus. Like, come on, we gotta get it together. No, but for real. Again, shout out to the Toronto Raptors. I'm making history. I know Toronto and Canada is going bananas. Shout out to Drake. You know, Drake was at every single game with his team on, and I know he's excited, and I know he's hyped. I know that parade, that Toronto parade, child, they, I know they were speaking about, you know, Toronto. So again, shout out to the, the Raptors. Shout out to y'all. Okay, let's get into, you know, some shit that we probably don't really care about, but. It's new, so let's talk about it. <laughs> so, um, from the Real Housewives of Atlanta, Deidre's ex-husband, Apollo Nita, um, it says that he's reportedly back in jail after violating the terms of his probation. Um, he has not been out, he hasn't even been out a month, and the nigga already violated probation, his parole. Like, nigga, get your life. Get your life. He's back in police custody at the Philadelphia um, FEC. Um, he was rearrested just nine days after being released from prison and is now placed in a halfway house in Philly. Um, they're very strict, you know. You know, y'all know if nobody knows about how halfway houses, you know, they're pretty strict. You know, you have to be in by a certain time. They're monitoring you all the time, so. He's not in jail, jail, but he is definitely not free, okay? You know, I've seen a post where the wife, his new wife, you know, said that he's innocent and this and the third. My thing is, if he was innocent, he would not be in a halfway house, period. There's a reason why. I know Phaedra's probably chuckling out of love. She's probably like, <laughs> nigga, you so Stupid nigga. <laughs> I ain't bad. I don't really care, to be honest. It's funny at the same time because it's just like, Apollo, get your life. You're too old. You're too old for the shenanigans. And speaking of Real Housewives of Atlanta, I heard that Kenya is coming back. Shout out to Kenya Moore. If Phaedra, if Phaedra, is not in this season, throw the whole series away. People saying Team Mark Braxton is supposed to be coming on. They are making, I don't know if that's true or not. Last time I checked, Team Mark, you know, is getting a VH1 TV show. I'm um, a reality show. I think it's a reality show. I don't know. I think I just seen the, you know, the headline that is she's creating her own show. So shout out to Team Mark Braxton. Um, and she does Real Housewives of Atlanta as well. That's dope. I don't really watch Real Housewives of Atlanta. I watch it from time to time. It's not one of those things that I have this must-see TV for me. But, you know, if it's on, I'll definitely watch it, you know. You know, shout-out to Candy. Candy's my favorite. I love you some Candy. And, you know, shout-out to Portia. She gonna do a lot. Poor thing. Poor thing. Um, let's see. What else can we talk about? There's, a, there's been a lot. Quite a few. 
Speaking of going to jail and being arrested, um, Cuba Gooding Jr. You don't know who Cuba Gooding Jr. is? Where have you been? Where have you been? He's been in so many countless movies. Um, he was arrested. Arrested for allegedly groping a woman in a New York City bar. Um, TMZ reports that he turned himself in to the Manhattan Special Victims Unit. Um, and, you know, he brought his attorney, Mark Keller, with him and is expected to be booked for forcibly touching, which is a misdemeanor crime. So he'll probably get out and he'll probably just have to go back to court. I don't get it. Like, what is wrong with these dudes? Like, speaking of, you know, touching and being inappropriate with women the shy, had a situation, if nobody knows the hit TV show, Showtime, The Shy, um, one of the main characters was fired because he could not keep his comments or keep his hands to himself. Like, what is wrong with y'all? Like, y'all can get pussy a mile up a minute. Y'all are celebrities. Bitches are literally throwing themselves at you. Why do you have to like to come to the conclusion that oh let me see let me go to this girl that does not want me that does not like me that does not want me around her and let me be inappropriate let me touch her let me grope her let me say suggestive comments to her like what the fuck is wrong with y'all y'all are some sick people y'all need to get y'all need to get help Cuba you need to get help if this is true I don't know it says allegedly so I'm gonna leave it at allegedly. If it's true, you need to get your life. You need to get help. You need to get help. Speaking of people that need to get help, oh my gosh, y'all. Okay, so the title of this article says that a student used a gender swapping Snapchat filter. Everybody knows that new filter that came out that you can, you know, if you're a dude, you can become a, a female and vice versa. Um, and he catfished a cop to allegedly, oh no, he catfished a cop that allegedly was seeking to um, hook up with an underage girl. Even the cops is out here being nasty, dirty, pedophile. So, um, I think it says a Bay Area college student was out here living to catch a predator in real life. 21-year-old Ethan posed as a teen girl using Snapchat's gender-swapping filter to catch predators on Tinder and ended up catching a cop. Ethan uh, masqueraded himself as a 16-year-old girl named Esther, and he allegedly um, was in communications with a Sam Manteo officer, Robert Davies, and they would communicate, and then, you know, he tipped off the police. And, um... They arrested him and he was booked um, into the Santa Clara County Jail on charges. Like, I, I, I just can't get, people always, I just don't get pedof, I just don't get the pedophile, I don't get pedophilia, I, I just don't get it. Like you have a sickness when it comes to that, when it comes to that, because you can find somebody your age, you can. There's hope for everybody. There's somebody out there for everybody. My thing is, as long as they are of age and they are not animals, you can find somebody to be with. I don't care if you're gay, I don't care if you're lesbian, I don't care if you're bisexual, I don't care if it's a transgender man or female. I don't care as long as they are age appropriate. Okay? Get your lives sick up. What else we can talk about, guys? Oh, let's get into some good news real quick. So, shout out to Aaron Magruder. If you guys don't know who Aaron Magruder is, he is the creator of the hit, you know, cartoon, late night cartoon, The Boondocks. The Boondocks is to be rebooted, and you know, with the first of all, before I even get into it, The Boondocks is one of my favorite, you know, late night cartoons. I love me some Huey, I love me some Riley, uh, Pops, uh, I just love this show. 
it's so funny. But one thing I loved about the Boondocks, especially the run that, you know, Aaron McRuder was a part of, he, you know, made it funny and he made it comical, but he also made sure every episode sent some type of a message, whether it's the DL community, whether it's the R. Kelly situation, you know, he always made sure that, you know, he gave us laughs and he gave us giggles, but he also gave messages and he talked about things in the world that, you know, we as not only an African-American community, we as a community at large are, you know, afraid to talk about it. Um, so shout out to everybody that's a part of it, that's going to be a part of it. Um, Entertainment Weekly reported it. They were the first people to report it. That is going to be a reimagined um, look for the Boondocks. It's going to be for the modern era. Um, Aaron Magruder has signed on to be a part of it, which that was my whole thing. If Aaron Magruder was not about to be a part of this, I was definitely not about to watch because that last season was a shit show. It was horrible. I don't know if y'all liked it or not. I personally did not, and I know a lot of Boondocks hardcore fans, they did not like it. They did not like it. They didn't like it at all. I don't know if it's going to be on Cartoon Network, Adult Swim. I don't know. Um, who knows? But I'm, I'm, I'm excited that Aaron Magruder is a part of it, that they got him back on, bo- on board, excuse me, and that we're about to get into some things. I can't wait. You know, I can't wait. Yeah, shout out to Regina King, John Witherspoon, those two goats. Shout out to them. Shout, shout, shout out. And since we're talking about shout outs and stuff like that, I just want to say congratulations to Cassie. I'm so, so excited for Cassie. Her and her fine ass. Oh my God, that nigga is fine. What? When I first seen Cassie with a when she broke up with Diddy and she got her a new man, I was like, Cassie, you better fucking work, bitch. That nigga is fine, yo. And his name is Alex Fine, because you know he's fine. Okay. They're expecting a baby. They're having a baby girl. Congratulations, Cassie. Congratulations. FYI, Cassie, me and you will forever be a bop. Okay? Forever be a bop. Anytime there's a cookout, and then there's a barbecue or a flashback party or whatever, if me and you was on, I'm on that dance floor getting my entire life. I'm feeling like I'm in middle school again. You know, my little gay ass just singing every word like that. It's just me and you. It's me and you. Okay. Shout out to Cassie. Shout out to Cassie and Alex. I'm so happy. And babies are a blessing. So have y'all been seeing Wendy, Wendy Williams, Wendy Wendell, Orenthal, Rufus, Clyde, Eoas, Pookie, Eldova, James and the Giant Peach, Ezra, Kyle Walker, Williams, Senior. Shout out to T.S. Madison. I got that from T.S. Madison. Shout out to her. But for real, Wendy has been living her best life. Her best motherfucking life. She got her a new She done got rid of that fuck nigga, Kelvin. She done moved out. Well, moved him out. And now she got her a new boo. And he is 27. And girl, he look damn good. Okay. Uh, word on the street is that Wendy's new boo is a 27-year-old fashion designer named Mark Tomlin. I'm about to report that. Um, I've been seeing pictures. There was a TMZ video, I believe, of her and him in a car and stuff like that. Wendy's been living her best life. And she's been, okay, bitch was at Summer Jam. She's been hanging out with DJ Booth. She even had a dinner with Charlemagne. Ever since Wendy got rid of that fuck nigga. She has been living her best life and I am here for it. Wendy Wendell. Wendy Wendell. Wendy Wendell. I live for you, sis. I live. You 
you notice the shits and giggles with your name and shit. I live for you, sis. Continue to be like, fuck you to that fuck nigga Kelvin. This bitch ass trying to get money and shit. Nigga, go get a fucking job. I'm tired of these bum ass niggas trying to get money from their fucking wife because they broke and they can't. You should have never. You should have never got that bitch pregnant. Fuck you, Kelvin. And fuck that bitch Sharina as well. Period. Okay. So let's get into something a little. I know y'all is tired, as I am, of this Jesse Smollett situation. I am sick of it. I am tired of it. I'm tired of watching about it. I don't have no stance on it. I'm over it. I don't want to talk about it no more. Lee Daniels. It was okay. Let me back up a little bit. So it was announced that you know Empire is coming up on this sixth and last season on Fox and Star also was canceled which fuck you Fox you because Star is my show Star is my show and y'all just canceled it and that cliffhanger was nutty nutty whatever whatever but anywho so it was announced that for the sixth season that Jesse Smollett will not be a part of it. Um, and there was an article saying that Lee Daniels did, I guess he did an interview. And, um, you know, he took to Instagram, excuse me. And, um, no, no, he did an interview. Guys, bear with me. I'm reading. Um, he did an interview with Vulture. And he said he was beyond embarrassed um, for rushing to Jesse Smollett's defense. Um, Lee Daniels can shut the fuck up. And this is why I'm saying he can shut the fuck up. Because this nigga is just pressed and he's just mad that his shows got canceled behind this shit. This is what, like, this is why people in show business, when they talk about their friends and shit, I'm like, fuck out of here. Because, it, especially when they become, when they're business associates and then they try to pretend like they're friends and shit. Bitch, if y'all business goes down today or tomorrow, y'all ain't fucking with each other. You ain't fucking with each other. This is case in point. Now that your shows Empire and Star have both been canceled, even though you know Empire is coming back for the sixth season, it has been canceled. They're giving that a proper, you know, farewell. But it has been canceled. Now that your shows have been canceled and people ain't fucking with you and you try to get Star back and nobody, no, none of the studios and channels are fucking with you at this point. Now you want to say that you are mad at Justin Smollett? Nigga, if you don't get the fuck from here, if you don't get the fuck from here, fuck out of here. Fuck him. Fuck everything he stands for his life. Okay? And that's my spiel on Lee Daniels. Monique, where you at, sis? I know you over there happy, grinning from ear to motherfucking ear. That yes, these bitches is finally getting what the fuck they deserve for fucking me over. Okay, shout out to Monique. She been living her best life in the pictures and her little dress. Uh, her. I live for Monique. I don't give a fuck what nobody says. I live for her. I live, 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 live. Okay, let's get picture that had the comments in 
nah, I put a comment, I was like, fuck you, you old ass bitch, fuck you, and you're gonna burn in fucking hell for doing what the fuck you did to these kids. That documentary was so good. It, it, it enraged me. It made me sad. Especially Corey Wise's story. Oh my gosh. Like, to see him... To just see him, period, is just a testament of God's grace and his mercy. Oh my gosh. The stuff that he went through in jail. Oh my God. Like, just... Uh, and he wasn't even, oh my gosh, this story was just so heartbreaking, and it was just so sad, and shout out to Ava DuVernay for, you know, making this, because it got people talking, it got America talking, and it got these bitches that thought they can get away with this shit, now they have nowhere to go to, they have nowhere to hide, they have nowhere to run to, we hope know who the fuck you are, and we're getting you the fuck up out of those positions. I heard that um, the lady that was in the prosecution, she stepped down. I think she was a professor at a college. She stepped down. Linda Ferrisine is getting everything pulled from her. And I'm glad. Fuck the whore. She still don't got no remorse for those kids. Still, well, they're not kids anymore. They're grown men. She still doesn't have no remorse for them. And I, I hope they open them. They open them fucking cases and get this bitch and she goes to fucking jail for the rest of her fucking life. Because it was nothing but being a racist bigot. That's all it was. Period. I don't want to hear nothing else. She was racist. Racist as fuck. And I'm disgusted. But speaking of New York. <laughs> New York. Now my state. I live here. I've been living in New York forever. But y'all, y'all gotta get it together. After this whole, you know, documentary came out, and now this dumb shit that I'm about to tell y'all, New York, we ain't looking too good right now. We is not looking too good. So y'all need to get it together. You guys know that New York, a New York senator, multiple senators actually, proposed a bill to legalize prostitution. Let that sink in. New York Senators Attempted <laughs> Attempted To Legalize Prostitution Okay Guys According to PIX11 News Senators Jessica Ramos and Julia Slazar introduced the bill at the New York State Assembly. Um, and if it's passed, the bill will make it legal to sell and buy sex under very specific conditions. Uh, okay, so this is okay, so this is my thing. We have the dark guys. I don't give a fuck. If you are an Instagram thot, if you are a snap, if you are a social media thot where you, you know, get, you know, guys to pay you to, you know, you know, to, you know, for your services. I don't have no problems with the sex industry or sex industry. I don't, I really don't. I watch porn, like, I, okay, I watch porn. I like me some fine niggas. I like me some big dicks, you know, some nice firm asses. I love all that shit. But there just has to be a limit. Like, where is the limit? Like, you guys love... I, I don't know when it comes with America. We love testing limits. Dude, we love testing limits. I know there's people that's out there prostituting day in and day out to this day. You know, they're getting, you know, arrested and all that stuff. I get it. I get it. But, like, there's just some things that just need to be left alone. And I believe, and I believe, I don't know if you guys, you know, if that's you guys' prerogative, but I believe, and I know a lot of people, you know, would agree with me that this situation just needs to be left alone. Prostitution is illegal. There's a reason why it's illegal, and it just needs to stay illegal. New York, get your life. There's pressing matters in the state of New York that we need to be worrying about. The education system, homelessness, providing
finding child of God. You guys, ban is surrogacy, having a ban on surrogacy. Y'all need to at the parent child act. Those are the things that we need to worry about. Those are the things that we need to figure out. Hell, you know, I, I smoke. I smoke me some weed. I do. I love me some marijuana. It's going to be a part of me for the rest of my life. So we need to legalize marijuana. Not too busy worried about legalizing it for people to fuck for money. Bitch. Fuck that nigga with that. Y'all need to get your life. New York, get your lives. Get your lives in order. There's more pressing things that we need to be worried about than bitches selling a pussy. Okay? Okay. And I'm gonna end it on the, you know, a cool note. Shout out to Chris Breezy. He is he announced that he is starting, um, he's gonna be starting a tour, the so Indigo Tour. And then I'll be featuring Tory Lanez, Ty Dolla Sign, Jordan Lucas, and Yella, Yella B. Um, it starts, the pre-sale, start, uh, oh, the pre-sale already started, it started a couple days ago. Um, it's going to be in Albany. I'm in the upstate New York area. They are going to be in Albany in September. Um, I might want to go. I might want to go. I'm going to meet some Chris. I love Chris Brown. I have a saying that Chris Brown can do no wrong. When it comes to music, he can do no wrong. I live for Chris Brown. I love that new single he put out with Drake. I love it. I love it. I play it almost every day, if not every day. I love it. I love it. Um, and I like Tory Lanez. Tory Lanez is, is my, I love Tory Lanez. I went to see Tory Lanez before. Um, he performed in upstate New York a couple of years ago. I went for my birthday. Um, I wanted to see Pickett and me and my cousin Honey. You know, we went to see him and Jock Peace perform. Um, he's a good performer. He has a lot of energy. And, you know, I like Troy Lanez's music as well. Um, Ty Dolla Sign. I love me some Ty Dolla Sign. Ty Dolla Sign is like my husband in my head. I love me some Ty Dolla Sign. Too fine. He's just too fine. Jordan Lucas. I like me some Jordan Lucas too. He's very, very dope. So underrated. So underrated. He's a dope, 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 dope artist. I haven't really heard anything from Yellow B. Um, so, you know, I don't know. Where are my options? I might want to go. I might want to go. I might want to go. <laughs> but if somebody give me some tickets, hell oh, shit, I'll go. I'll go. Yeah. And I'm going to end it off with yesterday. We got some Onika news. We haven't heard from Nicki Minaj, or we haven't seen Nicki Minaj since the Met Gala um, in May. Um, she just announced that she is, you know, dropping a single. It's called Megatron. She gave us a couple stills from the music video, I currently. And um, she's gonna be doing Queen Radio next week as well. So I hope everybody excited and ready for Queen Radio to return. I'm excited for this new era. Her Queen era was horrendous. Horrendous. It was just horrible. Just the whole rollout from the singles to her antics backstage. It was just horrible. So I'm hoping that she, you know, learned from that mistake. And this 15 thing is going to be, you know, a good body of work. I'm, I'm really hoping. Even though I enjoy Queen. I, I enjoyed a couple of songs from Queen. I'm not going to lie. It wasn't the favorite album of 2018, but it definitely was one of the albums I did enjoy. I'm not, I'm not going to lie and say I did enjoy it. I did enjoy the album, but um, it wasn't, you know, my top 10. It definitely wasn't. Um, let me see if there's any more news. Nope, that's about it. So I'm gonna go to a commercial break and when we come back, I'm gonna talk about um, what's been going on with EBS Squad. We'll give you guys a little scoop on EBS Squad and later on in this podcast, we're gonna have a sex talk. We're gonna talk about botany on my gay 
raised already. What about modeling? <laughs> Mom, please, please. After we talk about the media squad stuff, please get out the podcast. Please, 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 please. <laughs> we'll be right back, guys.
the nerves, it's the nerves. Um, so again, rest in peace to my auntie, Diane. You are missed every single day. We miss you again. Um, other than that, Yudia Squad is pretty much, you know, doing good. The subscribers, you know, have been coming in. Shout out to all my subs. Shout out to all my squad members, all my upper elites. I've missed each and every last one of you guys. You guys have been amazing with the feedback you guys give me. Um, it, it, it's just been this year and a half has been one of the, you know, best things. I never thought doing a social, being a social media influencer or doing social media in, you know, that brand where millions of people are potentially watching from around the world. Um, I never thought, and uh, I never thought, I never thought that I would get to where I'm at today. And you know, it's only up from here. So again, shout out to you guys. Um, other than that, that's pretty much it with the EBS squad, you know, news. You know, just stay tuned, stay tuned, stay tuned. Um, again, if you want to be in the mix, if you want to know, you know what's going on in real time go to www.facebook.com slash EBS squad um, you know that's where I'll you know talk to all my peeps and you know I give you guys peeps to when things are gonna get released and when things are released that way you can if you don't get notifications because YouTube notifications will be acting up I know I know um, so if you get the notifications, you don't get the notifications from excuse me from YouTube. You get the notifications, you know, through my Facebook. Um, well, really, you know, through my Facebook. And, you know, if you're an upper elite, I have an upper elite page where you get more backstage news, and I talk about different topics and stuff like that. You would just have to show me, you know, your proof of you being an upper elite. And if you guys don't know what an upper elite is, an upper elite is somebody that has subscribed to my channel. And that has hit that notification bell. I have a special little upper elite squad. I call you guys upper elites because you guys are really upper elites. You guys check out all of my videos. You guys are on the know for all my videos. And you know, I greatly, greatly, greatly appreciate that. And um, that's pretty much it. So when we come back, we're gonna talk about some sex and some relationship stuff. And we're gonna talk about bottoming, guys. I hope my gauge is ready. Here with me, girl. Shout out to Gag. So when we get back, we're gonna talk about that. So stay tuned. Okay, so we're back. Okay, so.
So I was okay. So reverse, but he's more of a verse top, not more of a versatile bottom. But um, we switch it up from time to time, and you know the stuff looks good. Like, you know, it looks good at that. Um, I can't lie about that. You definitely get to that. <laughs> Shout out to you. You already know who you are. I'm definitely not putting him on this put this name on this podcast at all. <laughs> like, nah, I'm not gonna do that. I want to keep it privacy, most definitely. But um, let's get into this article. So it says that um, a writer, C. Brian Smith, um, he strictly identified as a top for most of his life, you know, partly from internalized homophobia. Um, Cause you know, a lot of people, a lot of, a lot of people that get into the gay community, they like to be strict tops. Like I was a strict top when I first, you know, started experimenting It was gonna hurt. I was scared I was going to bleed. I was scared I was going to paint somebody. And if you guys don't know what painting is, I'm gonna give you guys all the gay lingo today. Painting is um poop. Pooping on drugs. But if you're bottoming, you should be clean. Like completely clean. I know a lot of people, some people are, you know, fetish, people got fetishes where they like that stuff. And if not I, because it's I get super soft. If I'm the top in the situation and I get, you know, shit on my dick, I am wet and I kind of want you to be fucked. Uh, I don't think. But, um, okay, so the article says, but thanks to a New Year's resolution to lose his receptive anal feed card, um, Smith saw a bottoming coach, Ken Howard, um, he's the founder of Gay Therapy LA, um, and he saw bottom as negative, as being submissive and feminine. Like I said, the society makes it seem that being um, a, a, you know, bottom, you know, you have to be um, submissive and you have to be feminine, but that's not the case. There's a lot of masculine bottoms. Y'all be surprised. Most of the trade, if y'all know about the trade and shit. Nine times out of ten, the trade be bottoms, okay? And they be power bottoms. They be knowing how to take it hurt. But um, it says one of the bottom experts Smith interviewed told him to be patient with his own dis- discomfort over identifying as a bottom. It takes time to unbind yourself from long, lifelong assumptions. Um, he says Smith learned the import- importance of relaxing his tool. You know, you have to relax. When you're bottoming, even if you're straight and if you want to try anal for the have to be relaxed. If you tense up, that's when the pain is going to intensify. Um, I've had to learn that. My first sexual experience, if you guys have never seen my video, um, me for my first bottoming experience, it was horrible. The guy did not know what he was doing. It hurt it like, you know what? But you know, you have, it's kind of like riding a horse. I mean, <laughs> riding a bike. I never did it 
it, but I heard that if you use the um, saline solution in the enema bottle, that it will be checked for hours. So just empty, the, you know, the saline water out and just fill it up with some warm, lukewarm water. You know, do what you gotta do, and you know, make sure you're clean. Make sure you're clean out. So do it a couple times. Uh, for me, it takes like a couple of times. It's depending on what I ate. Like if I ate like a heavy dinner or a heavy breakfast or something, then I'm gonna have to wash myself out um, more than a few times. But if I had like light stuff, then a couple of times, then I should be good. But um, again, I'm going. I'm not gonna stress this enough. I'm about to end this topic by saying, tops, bottoms. Make sure that you guys are comfortable. Make sure you're comfortable. Make sure you are lubed properly. Make sure you are starting off slow. Once you get used to it, then you can pick up the pace and you can, you know, go crazy. But really, make sure you're very comfortable. Um, I'm ending this by just saying be comfortable and use protection. Use protection. And I just want to say shout out to all my LGBTQ community. It is Pride Month, and I am so, 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 so happy to be a part of a community that is unbashed. Like, they are, they don't care. We don't care what society thinks, we're who we are, we live in our truth, and I respect each and every last one of you guys. I really, truly do. I hope you all are going out to your Pride events in your cities. You know, it's very important. Um, I hope you guys are using condoms, you know, safe sex. I hope that you guys are, if you guys like PrEP, I am not on PrEP. Um, but if you guys are interested in PrEP, go to your doctors, you know, ask them questions, you know, and, you know, do that whole thing. Maybe I'll do like a, a video, a segment on PrEP since it is Pride Month. I'll probably do it for next episode. But um, I'm going to wrap this up, guys. It's been a minute too long. You guys probably like, what the fuck are you ending? No, I'm just kidding. I just want to say thank you to all that lasted this long. I'm so excited. This is my first episode. It'll be weekly. Um, be, stay tuned to all my social media. Stay tuned to my YouTube. I will definitely also have a YouTube video version of this podcast. Um, it'll, you know, be released a couple weeks after, you know, the initial episode drops. Um, this this um, podcast will be on all platforms, all platforms, um, Spotify, Apple Music, you know, shout out to Anchor, Anchor is amazing, shout out to you guys at Anchor for, you know, making this podcast, you know, you know, a reality, to be honest, I always had a dream about this podcast, but I never knew how to start it, so, you know, Anchor has been amazing, um, shout out to Anchor, shout out to all my squad members, shout out to all my upper elites, and I just want to respect 